is about lenses and you can probably see sort of I move the camera a little bit I've got a whole bunch of them over there um, that's part of my collection of lenses they're the ones I probably use the most because they suit the camera that I use the most I better just uh, put this on the right way around there's one thing that uh, never ceases to amuse me people get these lovely little things which they're to help you control the light and stop flaring in your photography. And how many times do you see someone with it on the wrong way around like mine was just before? It's kind of funny. So I'll just move on. So there's often a sense that you need to have professional lenses. And I'm going to talk that through because sometimes it's true, but it's not always true. And there's certainly no reason to not use consumer lenses. So some of the best lenses that you can buy actually are quite cheap consumer lenses. Now, in the differences between the two, two of them, professional lenses, usually all of the lens optics are made of glass, whereas the consumer ones, they're often plastic. Not always, but often. Uh, that means that the glass ones are usually a better quality because they're ground to a higher standard. Professional lenses are usually the full length of the lens. So if it says it's 45 millimeters, then it really is 45 millimeters from where the focal point in the camera is up to where the optics end. The consumer ones often use tricks of bouncing light around inside them. Um, I've got one lens which is an 800 millimeter lens but it's only about that long so it's bouncing the light around on mirrors to achieve that most consumer ones are usually metal bodied and they're fairly robust so i've had mine for quite a few years and the previous brand of camera i, I had before that i had them for quite a few years as well uh, they tend to last quite a while even if you're a bit rough with them or if you drop them it's not something you want to do but if you do uh, the consumer ones are usually plastic and quite often they're not very strong. A lot of consumer lenses won't survive one drop, whereas the professional ones tend to. And if you're anything like me and you're a clumsy oaf, you'll probably drop them a lot. I certainly do. And I get them wet sometimes too, which leads me into the next point that the, cons the professional ones are often dust and weather sealed, which means if you're um, in the situation that Stuart was in, for example, and he was using the, the Sony lenses, which are quite good and mostly are weather sealed, then um, you'll not have a problem if they get a little bit wet. I've just seen a question from Akshat who talk about ISO and shutter speed. We'll be doing those in a previous, sorry, in a future session, not a previous session. Uh, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. The professional ones are usually got a very clever scientific design to avoid distortion in the images. Now, it's not the case with all of them, and I'll certainly show you some of the things that happen in the images when you do get a little bit of distortion. Now, consumer lenses are usually really good in the sweet spot for that lens. So every consumer lens has a particular place that was designed to try and meet. And if you use it in inside those parameters, and generally you won't find out what that sweet pot spot is until you actually try it. And it's often different for copies of the same lens. And I say copies because in manufacturing, you might make a thousand individual lenses and they're all copies of each other or copies of a master professional ones are often brighter than the consumer ones and what I, I'll, I'll cover that in a bit more detail shortly professional ones usually have the same aperture through their entire focal length so if you're zooming and your lens is f 2.8 which is just the size of the hole that the light comes through a professional lens will often be 2.8 no matter what your zoom range is Whereas the consumer ones might start at say f3.5, but the hole gets smaller as you zoom in the lens. And you might end up with something like f6.3 or even 7.1 at the furthest end of the zoom, which is okay as long as you know how to deal with it and you understand what's happening. The pro ones are often maintainable. And what I mean by that is that it's not something that you yourself take apart and maintain because these things are horribly complex. Um, I have tried to repair some vintage lenses in my time. I've been successful with a couple, but I, I would never try and take one of these apart. 
but they are maintainable in the sense that the manufacturer can renew them for you. So you basically hand them over, you pay a fee, and they give you back what is essentially a brand new lens, but it's the same one you had. They just clean it up and make it all good again. Whereas the consumer ones tend to be throw away. So if I dropped this lens, for example, um, I'm not going to tell you how much this was, but it's scary. Um, if I dropped this lens, it would be worth my while to have it fixed if I broke it or if I damaged it. But if I dropped, say, this one, which is a cheap, nasty little Samyang, to be honest, I'd just go and buy another one because <laughs> they're just not worth it. Now, I talked about brightness a little bit before. That's the size of the hole that the light's coming through into the lens. I'm not actually sure if you'll be able to see it in the Samyang. No, I think the aperture is too a bit too. Well, you might just see it. I'll try. So you can kind of see that that, see that little spot of light, it's getting bigger and smaller. That's the aperture changing. So that's how much light's coming in and how much light gets to your sensor. And the reason that that's important, it's about depth of field, which we're going to cover in a future session. But it's also about what kinds of photographs you can actually take with that lens. So if you are asked to take photographs of a play or perhaps a, a ceremony or an activity or a religious thing or you want to do photos at a music show, you need a really bright lens because you're going to be struggling to get light because it's always really dark in those places. So you need a lens that's at the brighter end. So you'll notice on my chart here, I start at f16, which is probably about as far as you'd want to go. And that's the smallest hole. Um, it's the furthest I'll shoot with on a modern digital camera. After F16, a lot of them, apart from some large full frame ones, will um, cause issues once you get over F16. Let's just leave it there because I don't want to get too technical. Um, F8 is a good all round. So F8 gives you a nice depth of field. So if you're shooting things that are happening outside and you've got lots of light and you'll get a, a good focal distance. Now we'll talk about that a lot in a future session. So I won't go into it much here. F4 is a good all rounder and it's a, a medium sort of hole size. Um, it's often the best hole size that the consumer lenses have. There are exceptions. Um, Canon, for example, make a really nice 50 millimeter lens that actually goes down to 1.8 and it's ridiculously cheap. It's only about $100. F2.8 is where I like to shoot most of the time. And F2.8 tends to be mostly in professional lenses. There certainly are some consumer ones that go there, um, particularly in prime lenses, which we'll talk about more shortly. F1.2 is just brilliant. Um, I've only got one lens that does 1.2, and that's this one. It lets in so much light that I can shoot in a dark theater, and I can shoot as though it's daylight. So I can capture movement. I can get things still, which is really, really important if you've got um, a director. Ananda knows this particular person. He's an absolutely wonderful guy named Roberto. But if he's screaming in your ear that he wants a still shot, and everything's moving, you got to give him a still shot. Now, the difference in the lenses, so this is a shot of my son working on some of his images, and this, this was with a very cheap consumer camera, and you can tell that it's got a, a lot of detail in this image, whereas the thing I'd really like to concentrate on is him. But there's a lot of other stuff that makes the image quite distracting. I mean, you can even read some of the paperwork if you try hard enough in the background. The brighter lenses are handy when you're shooting things. So this is a, a model shoot that I did um, named Sarah. It's actually her first model shoot. So she did really well. But this one's a, a Panasonic lens. It's a consumer grade lens. It does go down to f1.7. So remember, I, I did say some consumer grade lenses are really bright. But the way the lens is constructed means that the bokeh or bokeh, depending on how you try and say it, those shiny little spots in the background, they're quite rough and they're very spotty and they're quite large. And 
that can be good if you're shooting at night and you want the bright spots from lights and things in the background. So if you've got something like, I don't know, the celebratory lights like around Christmas time and Holly and things like that can be really nice if they're done this way, but they're not so nice the rest of the time because they distract you from whatever you were trying to shoot. Now, this is that Canon one I was talking about before. Um, I don't shoot Canon stuff anymore. I actually sold all my gear and bought a different brand. That's okay. Uh, these lenses, so this one does quite well in dark situations. And in this one, I was at a gymnasium and I was shooting people doing boxing. And it was quite dark in there, but this lens does manage it. But more importantly, it makes quite a nice smooth background. So while I know there's a brick wall in the background, you probably can't tell because it's nice and smooth. And that's what the, the better quality of lenses gets you. So this one's called a prosumer, which is sort of halfway between the consumer and the, the permanent one or the professional one. Now, when you start getting into professional glass, you'll notice in the background here with this model April is that there's two things that you'll see here. The sharpness around her face is really, really good. So exactly where I focused, exactly where I chose to have a nice sharp appearance is where it is sharp. But behind her, you can see a wonderful, smooth, creamy, now I think the word I used in the presentation was dreamy. I meant to type creamy and then I typed dreamy and I thought, no, nah, dreamy's better. So I kept it. Uh, and you can see what that background looks like. So for me, that's important, but it doesn't always have to be important for all shots. For some of them, I think it is. So for this shot with April, it would have only worked because I can get that nice background. The background behind her was so busy that it would have detracted from the shot. But you don't always need to do it. And one thing I will say is that your creativity is more important than the camera and the lens or the glass that you've got. You'll often hear lenses referred to as glass. And I really do mean that. While professional lenses can give you some things that make your life much easier as a photographer, there's nothing that you can't do with a consumer lens. And if you like the creamy, dreamy look in the background that you can't necessarily achieve with a consumer lens, you can certainly do it in post-processing afterwards in whatever your favorite post-processing tool is. So you can do a little bit of work, but you can still make it happen.